live from Ireland. I'd love to say it was sunny, but it's a typical Dublin day. We've got nice light drizzle outside. There's a rumor that a little yellow ball is going to arrive tomorrow. So we're getting very excited about that. I started off in 2020 doing a post up on Instagram saying I wanted to live wider and deeper. You'd think I'd know what was going to come next because I've certainly been digging deep uh, over the last few months. I think what inspired me to say that is that I don't have control over how long I'm going to live. I've always been conscious of that. But I do have control about how deep my life can be. So it's been partly wonderful over the last while to pause, to reconnect with old friends, the simple pleasure of going for a walk in the park, which has been wonderful. Just, I think sometimes not necessarily climbing mountains, but using up all of the space in the day and ending the day feeling quite fulfilled, finding that everyday beauty. For me, I think sometimes in life, you have to always be interested rather than be interesting. I certainly meet a lot of people who want to be interesting. But for me, I love listening to people. I love learning new skills. I've loved the last while um, for all the, the good reasons, not the bad reasons. Just to say, if I was to take my life linear, not wider and deeper, I would tell you, I grew up, eight of us, in a three-bed house. My mum would say, please don't talk about the Angela Ashes moments now. But I went to a school for socially disadvantaged children. There's two pictures on the wall. One is of the Deputy Prime Minister here in Ireland and the other is of me. So the chances of me doing what I did are really quite remote. Um, I then went on to be a nurse. Um, I still have a lot of nurse in me, by the way, particularly over the last while. I was a journalist, so angel to Rottweiler. I worked in TV and radio, mainly in print. I was a CEO by the time I was 30, and I had completely transferred into business by the time I went into Dragon's Den. I have investments in businesses uh, in many countries around the world and made millions along the way. But that is not what defines me. What I did in life is definitely not who I am. It's what life did to me that defines who I am. I think in many ways we talk about failure in business all the time. I grew up and we'd never admit to failure in business. Now we're always saying how great it is to fail in business, nature's harshest and best teacher. But in our personal lives, we hardly ever talk about the things that went wrong, the things that were bad. Recently, I was asked to, um, to talk about the day that changed my life, if you think about it. It's quite a big question. What day changed my life? I think most people who know me because I've spoken about it and done TED Talks, they may have thought it was the day that my husband died. He died too soon. He died at 48 and he died very quickly. Uh, he worked for the BBC for 20 years. He left a huge chasm in my life, but that wasn't the day that changed my life. Um, the day that changed my life is when I left my first husband. I think when I was transitioning from being a nurse to being a journalist, I met somebody who was far older than me, more sophisticated, wealthy. And for nine years, I lived in a relationship that was really tough, uh, physically violent and coercive. I still have, you know, the bruises and the mended broken bones. And funnily enough, I have some damage here on the side of my face, uh, muscular and um, bone damage. So that every time when I'm at my, my most happiest, I remember a particularly violent episode that damaged that side of my face. But that day that I had the courage after many failed attempts to pack a small bag into my little red car and drive away from the house, I felt I was driving over a cliff. I had nothing, financially nothing. I didn't even have a home. I stayed in an Ibis at Heathrow Airport. It was the cheapest place to stay at the time. But I also said to myself, never again will anybody be able to have this control over me. Never. I will stand on my own two feet. I'll earn my own money. I'll keep my family and my friends close to me and I'll value these things in my life from now onwards. So I would say that if I had never taken that step to drive away from that house, I wouldn't have met my beautiful husband, Richard, who was, if you get a bad one, you then get an amazing one. I wouldn't have my son, Dara, who is my rock. I would never have even continued after Richard's death if I didn't have Dara in my life. I also wouldn't have had my businesses. I wouldn't have had the wherewithal to go out there and try and be financially stable and independent of other people, go on and invest in other people, have an appreciation for being pro bono for the rest of my life. As soon as I started climbing that ladder, I put my hand down, I reached out to whoever was behind me, usually another woman, by the way. So if I was asked, you know, in my life, what changed me, it was definitely that day. And secondly, why give testimony? 
I think a lot of people who saw me as a dragon, useful to have all those qualities, by the way, when you're negotiating, they didn't really understand why I would go on national television and talk about something as painfully personal as being with somebody for a long period of time. Very few people understand that, that, you know, emotional, complex relationship where, you know, love and control are entwined in each other. It's because for all the weakness that I felt then, I realized I have a small superpower. All survivors do. We all have it deep inside ourselves. Um, and that's the, the power to help somebody else. So by me telling my story, I was able to reach out to other women and some men, by the way, who are going through something similar and learned enormously. I learned enormous, an enormous amount about how to connect with those people. I learned all of the similarities I had to those people. I went on to write a book, to do a TED talk. I now connect with women's uh, domestic violence refugees and others for the rest of my life. I think being a survivor, it changed me, but it definitely didn't destroy me. I went on to lead a huge successful life thereafter. I would say to all of you out there, it's not whether you're gonna fall down, we all do. We get bucket loads of adversity in our lives. It's how you get back up again. I think if there's one thing I've learned in my life, it's to get back up again, it's often important to know somebody who's been there before you. When my lovely Richard died, my mum had lost my father before me and happily she was able to show me how you know, some things mothers should never have to pass on to their daughters, by the way, but she showed me how to get there in terms of getting back into life. As Vicky says, I now work full time on TV and radio, I still have businesses. Um, and so in terms of giving testimony, in my lifetime, lots of people didn't give testimony. You know, we brushed things like mental health, homosexuality, child sexual abuse, alcoholism, drug abuse, under the carpet. Brave people started to give testimony and it changed life here in Ireland. It certainly, certainly changed life for same-sex couples. I wanted to give testimony about an area that very few people, when I did my TED talk, I was the only second person, whoever was an actual survivor, to give a TED talk. My husband, my first husband's now dead, so I'm free to talk as much as I want about it. Um, I finish with one thing. I'm often asked, um, would you write a letter to your younger self? What would you say? Well, firstly, I'd say, listen to your mother when she says, don't have that perm. And secondly, don't allow people to photograph you when you have that perm. I think it's much more interesting to imagine your older self writing a letter back to you. And I imagine that in the twilight of my life as an older woman, maybe as I'm facing the inevitability of that final chapter, that I will write back to myself, take every chance. Even if you worry about failing, you know, take the leap, quell the inner voices that whisper don't. I've had many of those throughout my life. Raise your hand high for every possibility that life throws at you. I have a little thing that's stuck on my fridge. It has been there for the whole of my life since I was probably 17 or 18. It's not the things you do in life you regret. It's the things you don't do. Thank you for listening to me.